I have a secret about triangles that has been passed down from generation to generation since ancient times. I'm kind of kidding, I just learned it about three years ago, but still it's an amazing trick and I want you to know it. This is a triangle rule that I use for my GRE and for my GMAT in the real tests and it really helped me score amazingly. So what is this awesome lesser known fact about triangles? Each side of a triangle must be less than the sum of the other two sides and greater than the difference between the other two sides. Now, before you rush off, close the video and tell all your friends about this amazing rule. I think it will really help you to learn it if you see it work through in two or three examples. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how this rule might be applied to shapes with four or more sides. So don't close it just yet. Well, let me give you an example. Imagine we had a triangle with two sides of length five and eight. Doesn't have to be a right angle triangle or an isosceles triangle. This rule applies to all triangles. What can we deduce about that third side of the triangle if we know the two existing sides are five and eight? First of all, we can say that that third side of the triangle must be less than 13 because five plus eight is 13. Remember the rule, the third side has to be less than the sum of the other two sides. And sum means just adding up the other two sides. Five plus eight is 13. So that third side of the triangle must be less than 13. It can't be equal to 13. Next, that third side has to be greater than three. Why three? Because eight minus five, the difference between the other two sides is three. So that third final side of the triangle has to be greater than three. At this point, you're probably thinking, okay, Philip, I kind of get how the rule works a little bit, but where does that rule come from? Why does the third side have this range of values that it must be? Hopefully this diagram will help make it clear. If the third side is too long, then the other two sides won't be long enough to reach and match that third side. And so you'll have an incomplete triangle. Likewise, if the third side is too short, then the two shorter sides simply won't be long enough to match or meet that third overly long side. And that's why we have a particular range of values for which the third side can be. Now this might seem a simple rule, but very few students have actually heard about it and even fewer use it in the GRE or the GMAT. So if you can learn and retain and practice this rule, you're already gonna have an edge in the test. And don't forget, in my real GMAT and GRE test, this topic was tested, so it's well worth knowing it. Time for me to test you out. If you have a triangle with two sides of length 11 and 15, which of the following could be the third side of that triangle? Four, 10, or 24? You can pick one, two, or three. Tick as many that apply. The answer is that 10 and 24 could be the third side of the triangle, but four could not. How did we get that? Well, look at those two existing sides that we've got, 11 and 15. What's their sum? 11 plus 15 is 26. So that's the upper limit for the third side. What's the difference between 11 and 15? 15 minus 11 is four. So that's the lower limit for what that third side can be. This means that third side has to be between four and 26, not including four or 26. Remember, if the third side was exactly four, then those two shorter sides, 11 and four, would only just exactly match the third side, which is 15. And so you'd have a flat line instead of a triangle. And that's why the third side can't be four and it can't be 26. 10 and 24 are within that range, so they're fine. If you're learning anything from the video so far, please leave a like or a comment because it just helps YouTube let other people know that this video is kind of cool and interesting. Time for the next test. If we have a triangle with two sides of length seven and 14, which of the following could be the perimeter of that triangle. Now remember, perimeter means the total sum of all the lengths of that shape. Could it be 22, 33, 
or 44. Tick all that apply. If you want, you can pause the video and have a go at this question. But the answer was 33. The two sides we have are 7 and 14. So if you sum them up, we get 21. The third side of the triangle has to be less than 21. What's the difference between 7 and 14? 14 minus 7 is 7. So the third side of the triangle has to be greater than 7. So what's the range of our perimeter if the range for our third side is between 7 and 21? Well, the other two sides are 7 and 14, which add up to 21. So our lower limit is 21 plus 7, which is 28. So it has to be, the perimeter has to be greater than 28. Our upper limit for the third side was 21. So again, adding up the other two sides, 7 and 14, that's 21, plus 21, that's 42. So the upper limit for the perimeter is 42. It has to be between 28 and 42, not including either 28 or 42. Only 33 is in that range. So only 33 could be the perimeter of our triangle. Finally, I'm gonna test this concept in a completely different way. It's a way that I've seen before in the GRE and GMAT plenty of times. So you might want to pause the video and have a go at this question for 30 to 40 seconds and see if you can do it. I'm gonna show you five sets of three numbers and a certain number of them could potentially form a triangle while the others couldn't form a triangle and your job is to pick out the ones that couldn't form a triangle. So give yourself, as I say, 30 to 40 seconds and have a go at this list. Which of these could not form a triangle? The answer was that six, nine, and 16 could not form a triangle, and eight, 12, and four could not form a triangle. If you pick out the two shorter lengths in six, nine, and 16, you get six plus nine, which is 15. And yet that third side is greater than that sum. That third side of 16 is greater than the sum of six and nine. So the six and nine couldn't stretch to meet the 16 and couldn't form a triangle. So that set could not form a triangle. The next set is the eight, 12, and four. Again, if you take the two shorter sides of eight and four, what do they add up to? they add up to 12, and that's exactly the same length as the third side. And remember, the third side has to be less than the sum of the other two. It can't be exactly equal to the sum of the other two, otherwise we have a flat line again. So that set could not form a triangle. All the other three sets could absolutely form triangles. Okay, I think I've now convinced you that it was an amazing trick that we have just learned but time to show you how it could apply to shapes with four or more sides. Here's the one thing you need to remember. For shapes with four or more sides, you can forget the lower limit. Only the upper limit matters. The upper limit for the final side of any shape, no matter how many sides it's got, is that it has to be less than the sum of all the other sides. How does that work in practice? Let's take the example of a pentagon which has five sides. Imagine we know that four of those sides are four, five, one, and eight in terms of their length. What would the limit be on the final side of the pentagon? Well, four, five, one, and eight add up to 18. So that final fifth side has to be less than 18 for the exact same reason that the other four sides couldn't stretch and reach the 18 if that third side was 18 or more. To cut a long story short, the final side of any polygon can't be greater than the sum of all the other sides. So there you have it, my amazing trick for both the GRE and the GMAT. Maybe it's ancient or maybe it's not so ancient, but either way, it's an essential, essential trick. If you love that trick, please do like, comment, question, and subscribe. But otherwise, have a wonderful day.